Oh, there's a lot of welding gloves here, mate. They're all right hand gloves, <laughs> only wear the left. <laughs> I'm currently finishing some cuts and grinds off. We are just here trying to build this tub rack. Check. Bango, baby. Bango, bango. So basically, guys, I'm not entirely happy with using a swag when we go out. <laughs> so I'm just trying I'm happy out. Happy with not having a fridge and only living out of a swag. Ask <laughs> your swag life. I thought that was all you, mate. <laughs> Look, it's hard to go from inside a car to a swag. So I'm gonna temporarily try this tub rack and tent on the tub rack trick. Mac did this like four years ago and a lot of people were mind blown because they didn't know how it works. So I'm gonna show you. This is how you hide your tub rack. Or have a very low one. Invisible. <laughs> and keep your torno working. And so yeah, so basically the advantage for me is it keeps all the weight really low. You maintain all the space under, underneath obviously, and you can leave a torno on so it stays dry. Get yeah, this thing out of the way. Bring the Nissan in, mate. Hey, bring the Nissan in. We gotta move the Ranger to get the C10 out, to move the Apache to bring the Nissan in. I don't know if those sunglasses are legal. <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick run through and show you guys how this actually works because a lot of people ask. And it's really simple. Box section here, get the top rack there. Carry the one over the two <laughs> equals. Before you know it, you got yourself an invisible tub rack. This pretty much all just cost about $110 at Bunning, so you can probably get it cheaper elsewhere, to be honest. But this is 50 by 50 box section, which you can leave as galvanized because you don't need to weld to that. But this is 25 by 50 mil, two mil steel. Which is very similar to a normal roof rack, I guess. So the, the trick to this in, I don't know about other trucks, but in the Nissans, there's tie downs down here. There's four of them, which are also up here. So you basically steal the bolts out of that and bolt this new rail in using the stock tie down bolts. And then basically you've got a new rail, which is a bit lot. They just got to lay some bloody dime bags and you're all over it. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself when you figured out how to do this? I was pretty stoked on myself when I did it. Yeah. I had a, I just bolted a, um, I don't know, rhino rack cage thingies to, to my arms. Got footage of you, he had the spare tire. A lot of people ask how the spare tire is just floating on the torno. <laughs> so yeah, now I figured I don't even need the rack. I'm just going to put a tent straight on it. Yeah. It's going to be sick. And I think the tent should sit about here. If my mass is right, it'll sit about there. <laughs> <laughs> He's bloody good, this guy. Oh, look, it's not my first radio, I'll tell ya. There's a sneaky truck sitting here, it's very dirty. It is filthy. Someone made me go out to bloody Spot X and film, and it was filthy, it was so dirty. And the exhaust points straight down before the diff, so it's just like blowing dirt everywhere. <laughs> just done a bit of a shed clean, and we're ready to rumble! I don't know if I should be giving welding tips because I'm not even a professional welder, but we're going to start TJ off on some stop, start, tack welding. Right that. Yeah, hold it a bit longer. Longer than that. Don't, yeah, but don't move it. So start back up here. Hold a bit longer. Yep. And overlap it. Oh yeah. So if you're doing it like that, you have the heat higher because it gets less heat put through the steel. I don't know why. Whereas if you're solid welding, you put a lot more heat through it, so it bonds it better. That's the first time I've ever done that. <laughs> Where's the grinder? <laughs> <laughs> I 
decided we need some gussets because they've got a bit of flex in them when you put weight on them. Right, the old cardboard cutout. Just stops that that flex going that way because it holds this and this together better than just a just a butt joint. You could you could even fish plate the sides, but I think we're just gonna go for the single gusset. Love throwing a good dime bag on too, eh? <laughs> what a run. Now here we got the gussets on. Too hot to touch, but hey, there's some strength in it now. Oh, they're both pretty good. Not bad for its party, eh? <laughs> it builds elevators. <laughs> How are we going to do the old <laughs> test fit, you know? Get up. There we get in there. Like a glove. That'll do the trick. That'll do the trick. Weld those feet on. We're uh, good to go. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, more work in them than we uh, thought. Rub a dub dub. Give him a quick coat of paint. I think I might wait till tomorrow though to like bob them in. Wait for the paint to dry. So basically done though. All right. So next day, I had to give it paint time to dry. So finished product. Here we go. We're just going to use roofing screws to screw it into the rail, but if that doesn't hold in the long run, we'll bolt it properly. I don't think you'll need it. It's quite a tight fit. Um, I'd probably bolt it, but <laughs> screws will be fine. It's not going to go anywhere. That ain't going anywhere. Yeah, that ain't going anywhere. As long as you say that. As long as, yeah, exactly. <laughs> say that and it's fine. <laughs> there we have it. Here's a bull tub rack. You can put a tub rack on here, clamps to your bars. Or just then, any tray you could. And you can still peel up your sides, get in here, no worries. Peel up the back, still put stuff underneath. Mate, it's just practicality. So yeah. And it's invisible. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't have a tent, you just put a flat tray straight on that as well. Mac had his spare tire on it. Have you seen the ray burn I got yesterday? Look how red it is. Oh Ooh. man, it hurts. You were welding in a long sleeve shirt, no? I oh, know, I had all my PPE on. <laughs> Clearly didn't do a risk assessment yesterday. <laughs> all done. I did plan to have the tent on in this video for you guys to see where it would sit, but I mean, you can imagine, it's just gonna sit straight on there. If you're wondering, yeah, you do need to put a few holes in the torno for the U-bolts to go around the rails, but I mean, that's fine, because the tent's always gonna be on top. It won't leak. So that is one issue. If you didn't want to put holes in your torno, don't do that way. But if you're wondering, this is from Tough Tornos, this one, and it works real well, even with that extra weight, they stretch pretty easy. Down on here, mate, a bit of cleaning. Bit of cleaning. <laughs> Just leave it at that. Check back in a couple of weeks, we'll see what's going on. <laughs> Got a bloody nice shirt on there, actually. Compliments start up. Excellent. Oh,